Hi, Sandy Mackey here with a little bit of heavy breathing just before midnight and 10 little rules for a blissy life. This book, 10 Little Rules for a Blissy Life, was written by a friend of mine, Carol Palmatier. And I've known Carol for not that long, um, considering how well I think I know her. Um, she was introduced to the Insights Group about a year and a half ago now, um, just about. And she and I very quickly struck up a friendship. Um, I think we just had so many similar feelings about life and the way that we um, interacted with life and with people and um, had several common interests and things like that. So it was a fast and fun friendship for sure. I did end up spending some time in Florida with Carol when she enjoyed her 56 sunsets on the beach. Um, a time in a cute little beach house in Cape San Blas, Florida, which was absolutely positively wonderful. And I think that's um, part of when she and I really got to know each other. We also had the shared experience of being a part of the Chopra uh, Center's 21 Day Meditation Challenge while I was visiting her in Florida. And some of the things that happened and experiences that we had. Um, they're really kind of hard to explain and, you know, we try, although bliss in a bubble comes to mind. And just things that maybe we wouldn't have thought were possible that became possible. So it was pretty darn cool. Anyway, I was talking to Carol this week. We were in the mastermind meeting together and she asked me if I would be open to reading her book to put it on audiobook. And I said, of course, I would be flattered. However, I think it would even be more impactful if Carol reads the book in her own words, because I know when I read the book, I had the pleasure of hearing her voice in my mind because I do know her so well. So for people who may not have ever met her, I think it'll be really powerful for it to come in her voice and in her words. 10 Little Rules for a Blissy Life by Carol Palmatier. Acknowledgements. To Lori for providing the space to write this book. To Al, Sandy, Stefan, Jody, Susan, Tom, Austin, Dave, and Mitch for their unstoppable mastermind attitude. To all the insights enthusiasts for inspiring me every day. To my daughters Val and Jesse for giving me hope, joy, and a reason to keep going and growing and to John for reasons that continue to unfold. Introduction, The Rule Book Growing up Irish Catholic in the 60s, I had a lot of rules. Some made perfect sense. Come home for dinner when you hear mom blow the police whistle or you'll go hungry. Others, not so much. No jeans to mass on Sunday. This one I never understood because our hippie priest had a long red beard and wore sandals. I think he was channeling Jesus. One of a brood of four, all close in age, I learned early that living by the rules meant staying under the radar, being the good girl. I got good grades, got into a perfectly nice middle-of-the-road Catholic college, and married the first guy I fell in love with. Twenty-five years, two beautiful children, and one divorce later, I found myself breaking every rule of common sense, happy home, and responsible adulthood. Not because I hated my life, Rather, because I felt something much larger, more full of truth, on the horizon where my visible sight ended. I felt bottled up. I knew there had to be more. I was smack dab in the middle of a midlife crisis. Only it didn't feel like a crisis. It felt like breathing. Now I am rewriting my rule book, setting my own compass. I am grateful for all the people in my life who gave me rules in the first place. This is not about faulting them for forcing me into a mold. I had free choice all along. I just never realized it. This is about finally seeing that my life is truly my own. I get to write my own rules, my own way of reacting to the world and determining my course. Now I get to live in radiant harmony with the thoughts of my own heart. These ten little rules work for me. I compiled them from a variety of sources, and some may already be familiar to you. You'll undoubtedly have your own rules for bliss, and I encourage you to write them down and make your own rule book. 
You'll find space throughout the book to jot down your own ideas and draft your own rules. Once you've created your own rule book, embrace it, live it, and find your own bliss. Rule number one, get to source. In our hyper-connected, hyper-goal-oriented world, the rush of things is the constant undercurrent to our days. How can we hear our hearts speaking their truth when there is so much noise and turbulence? Drowned out by the phone, radio, TV, neighbor, coworker, spouse, child, the heart would have to scream to be heard. In fact, my heart did scream. I found myself mired in a horrendous place where I was close to violently unhappy some days. I was scared, vulnerable, and susceptible to quick fixes that only made things much, much worse. I began to recover when I spent some time each day in complete quiet. I didn't call it meditation at the time, just downtime. Eventually, it grew into a practice of quietly learning to hear my heart speak. The true healing came for me when I spent two months in a cottage on the Gulf of Mexico in the winter of 2011. I began every day with a four-mile walk on the beach, with only the seagulls and an occasional dolphin to keep me company. With each step, I focused on clearing my head of the noise, the shouts, and the chaos. Every step brought me closer to peace, until finally, I arrived back at the cottage with a clear mind. The more I practiced this, the easier it became to block out the seemingly endless thoughts, the constant chorus of voices. And once I got to quiet, I started to really hear my own voice, the voice of my own heart. What blessed bliss this is now to start and end each day with this time. By the end of my incredible two months on the shore, that quiet space turned into a new place for creativity and imagination, for problem solving and forgiveness, and ultimately for a deep peace and joy that I had never known. You can find source in so many places, in those little moments that take your breath away. I will never forget when my oldest daughter Valerie was born, and I held her for the first time. In that moment, I saw the Milky Way in her eyes, as if she knew all the wonders of the universe. For the first time in my life, I felt completely connected to God. Begin today to find your source. Just take 10 minutes and turn off all the noise, breathe deeply, and let the thoughts drift in and drift out again. Tomorrow, add another minute or two. It doesn't take long, and the results are amazing. Well, that's chapter one of 10 little rules for a blissy life. I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. You can get it on Amazon. Just search 10 little rules for a blissy life. And thank you, Carol, for being a part of mine. <laughs>